Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. He says, now don't you know that, that those that run in a race, they all run, but only one receives the prize. Paul says, this is a great start of the year message. Run in such a way so as to what? To get the prize, to win. Look, you're going to start off this year. Don't go at it half-heartedly. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to be in the race, but I don't think I'll be. He says, run the race like you, you mean to win. He says, everyone that competes in the games, they exercise self-control in all things. He says, and, and they do it just to receive a perishable reef. But we, we, we have an imperishable prize that we receive. Therefore, he says, I run in such a way, not without aim. He says, I box in such a way, not like I'm beating the air, but I discipline my body that I might make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified. He says, Guys, whenever you compete in games, you know, whenever you, I mean, I did track cross country when I was in high school. We, we had this event, we ran uh, 880, it was called. Uh, um, and when you ran the track on the 880 uh, course, when it started, if you're a starter, we did a relay, 880 relay. And the starting blocks on a track, we had an oval track. And the, and the guy on the inside lane, his start position was farther back than the guy in the next lane over. He was actually a few feet forward. And then the next lane out, lane three, was a little farther forward. And lane eight, I mean, the guy looked like he was way ahead. If you were, if you were put in lane one, you're like behind everyone, it looks like. Except those of you that know mathematics, if you're on the inside of the circle, what's the advantage? <laughs> Shorter. Shorter, right? The reason they stagger it is so that you all, you know, are actually running the same distance and you have to stay in your lanes until a certain point in the race where you're allowed to break out of the lane but until that point it's on a, it's after they've already calculated so that you all had to run the amount the same distance and then they on a straightaway they, there's a mark and you can come together at that mark but before that everyone has to stay in your what happens if you if if I was to leave my lane before the mark Disqualified, DQ, you're out. You think that's a stu Why would you bother to take one step left or right out of your lane and get DQ'd? I mean, you do all the work. Listen, if you do all the work to go to practice and run and, 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 and you know, you sweat it out and do all the practices, when it comes to race day, you follow the rules because you didn't put in all those miles on the pavement just to get DQ'd because you took a step out of the line. Or, or the, how about the football players running the ball toward the end zone? He knows if he steps out of bounds with that ball, right, what happens to the play? Blown dead. He could be like, but it was one more step to the end zone and I would have been a touchdown. Sorry. No touchdown. You went out, you went out of bounds. You've got to play by the rules to make the play. And Paul's using an example it's very easy for the, you know, culture, the, the, career, the guys in Corinth, did they understand um, these analogies of sport? Those of you guys that have been over to, the, to that region of the world, in, in Corinth, you know, they had those big amphitheater, those Colosseum type amphitheater. What did they do inside those things? They had games where they competed. He's literally using the example that they knew. You know, they've been to the games. They've been to the Coliseum. They've seen that the guys in the Coliseum had to follow the rules or they were out. He says, so you, you, there's some rules to follow in our Christian walk. Don't go this, you know, go at this and then step out of bounds and think, no big deal. He says, keep, well, whoever the author of Hebrews is, we speculate a lot in, in Bible circles that, it was maybe Paul and Luke working together. It actually doesn't tell us who wrote it. But it does tell us something really neat around chapter 12. It says that you used to fix your eyes on who? On Jesus. 
It says, let us run the race with endurance and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Now he, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame and, and has sat down at the right hand of the Father. In other words, he ran the race right and he won the prize. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And it says, therefore, let us consider. Whenever, whenever we start feeling weary or, or faint, and some of you are going to make some New Year's resolutions, I'm going to lose all this weight, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to... And, and maybe in a week or two, you're going to get tired. Just consider Jesus. Because if you have trouble with endurance, if anything can give you motivation, if you think how much he endured, it'll help you to endure the small little things that you're going through. If we just look at what the Lord did for us. And, and we realize, you know, Paul says, I, I literally buffet my own body so that I won't be disqualified after all of this work. I don't want to get disqualified from the race after I've been running for so long. It'd be like, you know, you played the whole game and in the last bit you stepped out of bounds. Says, I'm, I don't want to do that. Now I get to hear, when I read these words, it, to me it's like giving me a little insight into this man. The heart of this man is like, I started off, I did this be, not because people were paying me to do this, I did this because I because I want to do it to win souls. But he recognized that, how many ministers started off with that and then got sidetracked? How many of you read about that they were doing really well, the ministry grew and all of a sudden something happened and you, you hear they had an affair or they, they, you know, whatever, stole the money, they did, something went crazy and, and you think, what? They, they were running well. Right? It started off, and if you, even with today's technology, we can even go back like a lot often and listen to the early sermons of those preachers. And you listen, and they're like, that dude was right on. And then something happened. They got, they got off skew. They, you know, something crept in, and they, they started compromising, or they started, and, and they didn't do what Paul said. Paul said, man, I, am, I, I buffet my body. Not buffet it, by the way. The old King James says, I buffet my body. I got to Hawaii <laughs> at a pastor's thing, and they're like, yeah, I buffet my body too. <laughs> and they're all like, culturally, there's a lot of bigger pastors here than I was used to, you know, <laughs> bigger here. And I, I said, that says buffet, not buffet. <laughs> oh, I thought, brother, it was buffet. I, I can do buffet real good. I said, I can see that, but... He's not talking that. No? Yeah, he's, he's talking, you discipline your body. You discipline it so that you don't get disqualified. You make it follow your mastery, not let it become master over you. But sometimes people, it's a very subtle thing, very easy in our culture. We have a very carnal culture. And by the way, did they have a carnal culture down in, in the days of Corinth? very known for being a carnal society, you know, led by the fleshly passions and desires. And, and they actually emulated and, 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 and put, put, actually raised up the standards of we're into taking care of the body, pleasuring ourselves, and, you know, they, they, they like boasted, we're good at this. Except the problem was that they were undisciplined in the faith because they had just gone after living a life in the flesh. And Paul, Paul says, I don't want to do all this work and then get disqualified right before the end of the game. So if I can encourage you as we start off this year, I, I just want to tell you, it's something that, just like we have to purpose in our mind when we make a resolution, I'm going to do this. How long does those resolutions actually last? Two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> No, I'm going to tell you how long they last. They long, last as long as the person who made them has decided that they'll last. When you make a decision to do something, it will last as long as you continue in your decision. So if you can hear it, just be blessed this year. Don't get disqualified. Listen to Paul's heart. You're, you're, you're doing, do all that you do for the sake of the gospel. 
Keep the focus while you're doing it. And, and it'll help you stay abiding by the rules. It'll keep you in the race. And I don't want you, anyone getting out of the race. I want all of you to be doing it. In fact, we've got some brothers and sisters that have backslid and fallen out of the race. And if you would join me, I'd like to pray, close in prayer that they would come back into the race. Remember the prodigal son when he came back? They rejoiced. Maybe the churches, if we could just rejoice when the prodigal returns, the prodigals might start coming back. Let's pray. Father, I pray that as we go from here this day, this first day, the sermon that we get to hear from your, from your scripture, Lord, that you would let the parts that were meant for each individual here to, to just be taken away from this place in their heart, Lord, and in their mind, and in their spirit, down deep, Lord, that, that we could all receive what we needed from this for, for our growth individually. We could continue to get closer to you, our Maker, and to the things what you have, that we could become participants, like Paul was, in this great work of your gospel. Lord, we want to partake in your, in your gospel. Help us do all, all that we do. For your sake, we ask it. As we go from here, in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen, guys. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.